Well, I'm back with another video. For four decades, from the mid-1950s until 1994, the Democratic Party held the majority in the United States House of Representatives. During that time, the Democrats instituted policies and procedures that effectively shut the Republican Party entirely out of the process, sitting on the sidelines as the majority dictated policy. With her new enlarged majority in the 111th Congress, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi is poised to reinstitute those draconian good old days. When Republicans swept to power in 1994 under Newt Gingrich and his contract with America, they set out to change those rules to allow the minority. So, after 40 years of one-party rule, during which the Republican Party was told to go sit in the corner, Newt Gingrich brought about real reform that allowed the Democratic minority a seat at the table. To be sure, the House still operated under majority rule, but the minority had a greater voice than at any time in nearly a century. And yet in 2004, after a mere 10 years in the minority, the Democrats had begun to chafe at their lack of power. Now after a mere two years holding the gavel of power, Nancy Pelosi has decided to rewrite those rules again, bringing back the specter of American democratic fascism in the House of Representatives. Speaker Pelosi is attempting to turn back the clock on change. She is bringing back the bad old days. Not the good old days. She is bringing back the bad old days. Recalling democratic filibustering of needed civil rights legislation. Unwilling to simply lie down and play dead, the Republican leadership has sent a letter of protest to the Speaker asking her to reconsider her draconian proposals. Is this the beginning of the end of the American economy and capitalism as we know it? Is it the end of true conservatism in America as we know it? Of course, I have to think this isn't the case, but a part of me isn't so sure. We are grooming a generation of people to believe that the government should babysit them from cradle to grave. Entitlements have taken over the American spirit and the American work ethic. Suddenly, everything has become a right. When I say everything, I mean everything. It is now considered a right to own a home, a right to get a college education, a right to money that others made. This entitlement, get everything for nothing mentality, is only the tip of the economic iceberg. Bailouts, am I the only one that just had a huge question mark in their head when they first heard about this policy? Bailouts? What the heck is a bailout? You live or die in a free market economy. Either way, if left alone, it equals prosperity. The problem is, we are slowly polluting and deconstructing the free market. It first started with the housing giants Fannie Mae and Freddie because we had to do it because the blame was placed squarely on their shoulders. While they surely are to blame for the majority of this quandary, nobody ever thought to blame the people. Those who applied for and accepted loans, knowing full well they could never pay them back. The bailouts of AIG, Freddie, and Fannie have truly opened a Pandora's box. Soon after this nausea rescue package was constructed, everybody came running with their hand out. Every state and many cities in the Union began to demand their share of the funds. Now this free-for-all bailout orgy has expanded to the auto industry. We are being told once again that we have to bail out these failed auto companies. Let me just stick my neck out here and say, heck no! Where does it end? If we bail out every single institution and company Company that faces extinction? Where do we draw the line? Fiscal responsibility is something I feel we have completely abandoned as a virtue throughout America and more importantly, the government. We cannot afford this, people. We truly cannot. Someone, somewhere, is going to have to pay this bill and it simply can't 
be done. So every time a company runs themselves into the ground through poor management and corruption, we have to rescue them now? This is a slippery slope that we are presented with. Once people see that being bailed out has become a viable option, the begging will never end. Why do you think the major proponents of this bailout policy are members of the loony left? Pelosi and Reed, etc. They advocate this for the reason that many seem to ignore. The convenient little byproduct of these government bailouts is the transfer of ownership. Once these companies accept this charity, they virtually sell their souls. For those of you who don't know, this is called socialism, the favored system of the left. The biggest condition of these bailouts is the fact that once they go through, they have to do exactly what the government wants. This entire policy is so ludicrous, I almost don't have words for it. So let's take institutions and companies that have been run into the ground because of the government and give them complete ownership of them. This sounds like a good plan, right? This pseudo-governmental firm like Fannie Mae and Freddie were destroyed because of left-wing corruption. So now the government controls them absolutely. The auto companies are failing because of insane trade regulations and environmentalist bullying. So now we are about to hand the reins over to the government. This is the equivalent of making the worst employee in your business the boss of it all. Say you owned a restaurant and you had a busboy that was absolutely awful. He slowed down the service, left the tables dirty, and was stealing from you to boot. So instead of firing him, when you come across financial difficulty, you decide to step down as owner and hand it all over to the busboy to help you out of the hole. This welfare nation that we have created is a beast that hunger can never be satisfied. Socialism has been sold to people hook, line, and sinker, and it will be the end of us. Financial responsibility has been tossed out the window by everyone across the board. From the individual citizen that has to buy his own house and pay his own way through school, to the corporations that have destroyed themselves. With this abandonment of responsibility through this adoption of entitlement, the American spirit is dying. Democracy will come to an end once people start to exploit the benefits sucked from the public treasury. This welfare mentality will have a snowball effect as it did in France. People will continue to vote for the person that guarantees them more and more benefits from the said treasury. As this person will more than likely be a Democrat, the progression to a France-like socialist nation will be inevitable. My biggest fear is that conservatives in Washington today believe that this is the wave of the future. They will start to pander to the people by offering the very same liberal policies that we have fought so hard against. Nothing infuriates me more than seeing all these so-called conservatives crying about the election, saying that we lost because we aren't liberal enough, saying that we need to become more liberal in order to get elected. Are you nuts? You really believe this while you sit there and call yourself conservative? Maybe if you are conservative and you call yourself Republican, you should stop calling yourself a Republican because you're not Republican and you're not conservative. This is not a center-left country. It is most certainly center-right. And if you don't agree with that, then please go sign your name to the Dem list. As we distinguish ourselves from the socialist left over the next four years, we must go back to the conservative roots, people. We need to go back. We must reestablish our values of financial responsibility and find our own superstars that will bring the true conservative message to the masses. Once people see what they really voted for and start to experience its implications, they will realize that capitalism, free markets, and essentially the conservative movement is the only answer for a prosperous country. Let us please remember that it was asked not what your country can do for you, but what can you do for your country. Let us also remember that once you give the government the power to give you everything, you also give it the power to take everything away.